Hi, good evening everyone. Welcome along to another Saturday night Jay's Virtual Pub Quiz. Um, not live, pre-recorded. Uh, as you watch this, I am in my local pub hosting, not hosting, uh, judging a Stars in Their Eyes contest tonight. So I have no idea who's entering. I have no idea who, what kind of acts we've got. Uh, all I do know is there's a lot of people um, that have signed up for it, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and it's, well, it started at eight o'clock and the first act was on. A very short intro tonight because obviously it's pre-recorded, so I have no... Um, no shout outs or anything and not really anything to talk about since Thursday's quiz, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, so that is that really. Um, we've got about a minute to go. Remember, no quiz jockey this evening because we don't have quiz jockey on a Saturday. Um, I don't know why I have to say that every week, but there you go. Uh, yeah, so no quiz jockey this evening. Uh, just grab yourselves a pen and a piece of paper and get yourself settled in. Uh, but yeah, 45 seconds to go. That's why I've done a very short intro because... I couldn't find words for 10, 15 minutes to fill. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I hope you're all good. Um, usual things you'll find on a Saturday. Uh, 50 questions as, all, as always, plus some things to get stuck into in the breaks. Uh, so we'll get to those in a little while. But other than that, yeah, we're all good. 20 seconds. Also, you're going to have to sort of, um, how do I put it, uh, medi uh, mediate? Yeah. Mediate yourselves. If, you, if you're playing against someone tonight and you come up with an answer that you convinced is right and you can convince the other team that it's right, then, you know, give yourselves a point because uh, I'm not here to mediate on your arguments, unfortunately, this <laughs> evening. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it then. Let's ping that across. Here we go. The timer is up. Uh, welcome along. It is Saturday the 24th. And it's a Friday then. It's Saturday the 24th September. Thank you for joining us. It is Jay's Virtual Pub Quiz. Uh, Pre-recorded, not live. Pre-recorded. I'm recording it live, but you know what I mean. Uh, let's get straight into it then. Let's kick off with an entertainment round. And question number one. Uh, so, for tonight, Fastest Finger First is a spin-off which quiz show? So, Fastest Finger First is a spin-off for which quiz show? Oops. Clearing everything off my desk. Uh, number two, name the movie from this picture. So name the movie from this picture. Uh, number three, Deep Deep Trouble and Do the Bartman. Were UK top tens for which cartoon family? So Deep Deep Trouble and Do the Bartman were UK top tens for which cartoon family? Number four, who won the first ever series of Celebrity Big Brother in the UK? So who won the first ever series of Celebrity Big Brother in the UK? Number five, which actor links the roles of the genie in Aladdin and Mrs. Doubtfire? So which actor links the roles of the genie in Aladdin and Mrs. Doubtfire? Number six, Cher, Chrissy Hind, Naina Cherry, along with Eric Clapton, 
teamed up to release which single 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 in aid of comic relief in 1995 so Cher, chrissy hind nana cherry along with eric clapton teamed up to release which single in aid of comic relief in 1995 Number seven, broadcast since 1951. What is the name of the BBC Radio 4's radio drama? Too many radios in that. Uh, broadcast since 1951. What is the name of BBC Radio 4's radio drama? At number eight, which British actress provided the voice for the fairy godmother in the Shrek films? So which British actress provided the voice for the fairy godmother in the Shrek films? Still loved her song in that. Brilliant. Uh, number nine, name the George, hello, uh, name the George Benson Whitney Houston song from these lyrics. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. So name the George Benson Whitney Houston song from this. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. I've just broken something and I'm trying to find something to fix it with. Come on, it. And finally, number 10. Yesterday was National Teletext Day. But which came first? Was it CFAX? Was it Oracle? Or was it Teletext? So yesterday was a national teletext day, but which came first, CFAX, Oracle, or teletext? So a bit of science and nature for you for round two. Let me push that button and click here. Here we go. Number one, according to both the NHS and the Red Cross, what is the most common blood type? I'm not adding positive and negatives on this. Uh, according to both the NHS and the Red Cross, what is the most common blood type? Number two, copper and what make up brass? So copper and what make up brass?
Number three, what can be the incisors, the canines and the molars? Some great names for some bands there. Uh, but what can be the incisors, the canines and the molars? Welcome to the stage, the insides, the canines and the molars. This is what happens when I've not got like Discord to entertain me. I have to make things up in my own head. <laughs> Uh, number four, where in the body can you find the thyroid gland? So where in the body can you find the thyroid gland? Whoa, too far. Number five, the disorder of SAD, S-A-D, uh, sometimes known as winter depression. But what does the S stand for? So the disorder of SAD, which is sometimes known as winter depression. But what does the S stand for? And number six, what part of Earth's atmosphere was said to be affected by the release of CFCs? So what part of Earth's atmosphere was said to be affected by the release of CFCs? Number seven, true or false, a butterfly uses its tongue to taste. So true or false, a butterfly uses its tongue to taste. Uh, number eight, the train a grande, uh, sorry, the train a grande vitesse is the high speed rail network in which country? So the train a guard, so the train a grande vitesse is the high speed rail network in which country? Really should have laid that out better for myself to read that, but never mind. Uh, number nine, what is the centre of an atom called? So what is the centre of an atom called? And finally, number 10, the computer program, pro, uh, nah, nah. the computer programming language of basic. What does the letter B stand for in basic? So the computer programming language of basic, what does the B stand for?
So we'll finish, if it wants to work, we'll finish off with Blockbusters then for your first part of the quiz this evening as it's Saturday. Uh, but we're going gold run tonight. So uh, there you go. You've gone up against your competitor and you've got onto the hot spot. Uh, can you get from one side of the board to the other? Not in this one, there's 10 questions. Here we go. Number one. Uh, what QR is the generally accepted code of rules in boxing? So what QR is the generally accepted code of rules in boxing? Uh, number two, what GG is a popular eloping destination? So what GG is a popular eloping destination? Number three, what WF is a recognized sign of surrender? So what WF is a recognized sign of surrender? Number four, what GP is someone or something used in an experiment? So what GP is someone or something used in an experiment? And number five, what TS comes after once bitten? So what TS comes after once bitten? Number six, what KO signals the start of a football match? So what KO signals the start of a football match? Number seven, what BS connects Sherlock Holmes and Danger Mouse? So what BS connects Sherlock Holmes and Danger Mouse? Number eight, what a JL is a disorder associated with a long flight? So what JL is a disorder associated with a long flight? Number nine, what IT can be found inside a pneumatic tire? So what IT can be found inside a pneumatic tire?
And your final one for the first part of tonight's quiz, number 10. What FW is a big circular ride at a fun fair? So what FW is a big circular ride at a fun fair? Okay, so that is your first 30 questions this evening. Uh, as long as I've done my wizardry behind the scenes and scheduled the tweets, uh, they'll be up on Twitter now if you need to recap them or jvpqquestions.com. Uh, they'll all be up there for the first. Uh, oh, no, actually, no, you won't be able to do that tonight. Uh, yeah, go to Twitter. <laughs> Sorry, I completely forgot because obviously I've got to do it a different way. Uh, yeah, head to Twitter and the individual links are there because it's not going out live um when it's live i can do jvpqquestions.com and you can just go on off uh, but when it's not live you have to go to um uh, you have to go to the individual links for each round uh, so yeah head to twitter now <laughs> and yeah, the links will be up there now for you uh, so i'm going to take a short break at this point um as we always do at this moment um and yeah for your first break I can't remember what it is. Let me bring it back down. Oh, yeah. Uh, so put these supermarkets in order of current market share. Um, so it's recently updated the market share for the supermarkets. So put them into order from uh, from highest market share down to the lowest. Uh, nine of these coming up on screen. And I will see you after. Uh, if I get on the right one. That one there. That one there. That one there. That one there. Uh, that one there. That one there. I'll see you after this.
Okay, uh, hopefully you uh, have some answers written down for these. Uh, let's find out how you did with them. Oh, no, no, I'm not mute. Sorry, I'm just not even live and end up muting myself potentially. Uh, right, here we go then. Let's give you the answers to these. Let's put them in. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. So in ninth place then is Iceland with 2.4% current market share. Uh, eighth place is currently Waitrose. They've got 4.7% market share at the moment. Uh, Co-op is number seven. Uh, six and a half percent market share. Uh, Lidl is currently sixth with 7.1. Uh, the shock though is in the top five. Morrisons have slipped out of the big four. Uh, they are currently fifth with 9.1 percent market share. Uh, yeah, Audi have broken into the top four. It's like getting a place in the Champions League in football. Uh, but Audi are up there now, 9.3 percent. They've overtaken Morrisons, moved into fourth. Asda just uh as they're in third uh with 14.1 percent uh second is sainsbury's with 14.6 percent those two tend to fluctuate between each other quite um uh on and off throughout the years um so sainsbury's a second and number one is tesco's with 26.9 percent mm -mm 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 -mm. So how did you get on with those? Let us know. There'll be some dingbats for break two for you to get your teeth stuck into for the second break. Um, but for now, if you want to get your marking sheets uh, ready, and let's, well, you do that while I do what I need to do. <laughs> because I get everything set up, I need to move me back down there. Do that. That's off, that's on, that's off. Perfect. Spin that across. Okay, right, let's see how you did with the first 30 questions this evening. Uh, we kicked off tonight with entertainment. Uh, number one was Fastest Finger First is a spin-off to which quiz show? It's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I didn't even know this was a thing, so I now need to go back on whatever catch-up thing it is to find uh, and uh, have a watch of this. Uh, number two, name the movie. That is Twins. Number three, Deep Deep Trouble and Do the Bartman were UK top tens for which cartoon family? It's The Simpsons. Can everybody do the Bartman? Do the Bartman. Do the Bartman. Number four, who won the first ever series of Celebrity Big Brother in the United Kingdom? It was Jack D. It was that partnership with Comic Relief, I think it was. The Children's Need. Comic Relief, I think. Uh, and there was only six, uh, six contestants over eight days. Number five, which actor links the roles of the genie uh, in Aladdin and Mrs. Doubtfire? It's Robin Williams. Number six, Cher, Chrissy Hind, Nana Cherry, along with Eric Clapton, teamed up to release which single in aid of comic relief in 1995? It was Love Can Build a Bridge. Number seven, broadcast since 1951. What is the name of the BBC Radio 4's radio drama? It's The Archers. Number eight, which British actress provided the voice for the fairy godmother in the Shrek films? It was Jennifer Saunders. Number nine, name the George Benson Whitney Houston song. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Uh, that is the greatest love of all. Now, if I get forced into singing at this uh, Stars in the Rise that I'm currently hosting, that is what I will be singing. The George Benson version, not the Whitney Houston version. I can't get as high as Whitney Houston. Uh, but yeah, if they say, you have to sing, you're a judge. This is what I'm going to sing. And um, finally, number 10. Yesterday was National Teletext Day, but which came first? Uh, it's CFAX. The CFAX was launched first. It was then uh, Oracle was launched, um, and then it was replaced by Teletext. So I don't know why they call it National Teletext Day when CFAX came first, but there you go. Uh, round two is Science and Nature. Uh, it was Science and Nature even. Number one, according to both the NHS and the Red Cross, what is the most common blood type? It is O. Because they both get the most donations of it and run out of it as well. Uh, number two, copper and brass make up... Uh, copper and what make up brass? It is zinc. Uh, number three, what can be incisors, the canines and the molars? It's the teeth. Uh, number four, where in the body can you find the thyroid gland? It is in the neck. I don't know why, I, for some reason, I always thought the thyroid gland was the one that was in the top of your thigh. I don't know. Yeah. Geography and anatomy, I'm rubbish with. Uh, number five, the disorder of SAD, sometimes known as winter depression. What does the S stand for? It is seasonal. I did have this written down. I can't remember what the word is. Seasonal something disorder. 
I'll keep that for next week. Uh, number six, what part of Earth's atmosphere was said to be affected by the release of CFCs? It's the ozone layer. No one ever talks about the ozone layer anymore, do they? Has it right, repaired itself? And number seven, true or false, a butterfly uses its tongue to taste. Uh, it's false because one, it doesn't actually have a butterfly. Uh, it doesn't have a butterfly. It doesn't actually have a tongue. It just has one big sort of mouth. And two, uh, the majority of the things it tastes comes through its feet. Go figure. Yeah, its taste buds are in its feet. And number eight, the train. So start this again. The train, a grande vitesse, or some, sometimes commonly known as the TGV, is the high speed rail network in which country it is France. That's why I needed to put the emphasis on train. The train, a grande vitesse. Uh, number nine, what is uh, the center of an atom called? It is the nucleus. And number 10, the computer programming language of BASIC. What does the B stand for? It is beginners. And again, I can't remember what the rest of that stood for. Um, round three was blockbusters and your gold run number one. What QR is the generally accepted code of rules in boxing? It is the Queensbury rules. Number two, what GG is a popular eloping destination? It's Gretna Green. Number three, what WF is a recognized sign of surrender? It is white flag. Number four, what GP is someone or something used in an experiment? It is guinea pig. Number five, what TS comes after once bitten? It is twice shy. Once bitten, twice shy. And number six, what KO signals the start of a football match? It is kickoff. Number seven, what BS connects Sherlock Holmes and Danger Mouse? It's Baker Street. It's their addresses. Number eight, what JL is a disorder associated with a long flight? It is jet lag. Number nine, what IT can be found inside a pneumatic tire? It is in a tube. And finally, number 10, what FW is a big circular ride at a fun a fun fun where? And a fun fair, it is a Ferris wheel. Okay, so top your scores up. How are you getting on so far? 30 points available for you this evening. As how are you getting on out there? Um, while you're adding all of that up. So next, uh, yes, next Thursday, the quiz is live on location from Connections. Really looking forward to that. Uh, sorted a few things out. Uh, for that so yeah looking forward to that and doing some social media stuff with them and then next saturday's quiz is pre-recorded again uh, as i say i'll be in a i'll be in a hotel in bexley Heath getting ready for uh, the marathon on sunday i found out my start time as well today but i'm not telling anyone i'm not telling anyone anything uh we will let you know the my tracking number and what have you if you want if you want to track uh, and again as i said on thursday the link is down below just to clarify the link down below it's for both myself and chris my friend i introduced you to a few weeks ago um so that's donation link for both of us so we're both running uh, for connections along with i think there's about there's about seven or eight others running for connections this year so uh, looking forward to that and seeing everyone about uh, and looking at the guidebook as well uh, the event guide that's come through it's going to be a lot more better than last year there's gonna be a lot more people allowed to be out and about and a lot more people allowed to sort of you know be you know you don't have to like we were told only one person was allowed to come and support us last year so this year it's all music and fun and games so yeah looking forward to it be good fun uh right uh, i want to be on that one there and then i want to be on that one there and then i'm gonna giggle because i don't know what your connection is tonight okay so connections around as always uh nine questions question number 10 what links them all together you're gonna have to think about this a little bit OK, the, the, you're going to have to think. I know it's a Saturday night and I really shouldn't make you think, but you are going to have to think a little bit on this. But let's see how you get on them. Uh, here we go. Question number one. Question number one. Question number one. There we go. Uh, what P can be another word for the principle or of chief importance? Confuse myself then. Uh, what P can be another word for the principle or of chief importance? I really like this connection, by the way, but then I like most of them. 
And before anyone asks, I know someone's put in Discord, is it Monopoly? No, it's not Monopoly. Uh, number two, what is the name of the cheese from southern Italy, traditionally made from buffalo's milk? So what is the name of the cheese from southern Italy, traditionally made from buffalo's milk? Mm -hmm. Looking at the wrong clock. Uh, number three, complete the quote from a few good men. You can't handle the what? You're out of order. You're out of order. This whole courtroom's out of order. Sorry. Uh, complete the quote from a few good men. You can't handle the what? Ooh, I don't know if you picked that up. Let me the microphone picked that up, but that was my knee. <laughs> my bad knee as well. Uh, number four, what can go after roller and ice and before board? So what can go after roller and ice and before board? That's just what you want. Nine days before marathon. Uh, number five, someone faced with a difficult choice between two or more alternatives is said to face a what? So someone faced with a difficult choice between two or more alternatives is said to face a what? And number six, what is another name for glycerol? It's colorless, o colorless, odorless, and frequently used in cosmetics. So what is another name for glycerol? Colorless, odorless, and frequently used in cosmetics. Number seven, when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, Franklin D. Roosevelt declared it was a day that will live in what? So when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, Franklin D. Roosevelt declared it was a day that will live in what? Uh, number eight, what is the molten rock expelled from a volcano called? So what is the molten rock or magma expelled from a volcano called? In case anyone tries to put in magma, magma won't give you the link. Number nine, what word beginning with R can be used to describe a situation full of possible danger, failure or loss? So what word beginning with R can be used to describe a situation full of possible danger, failure or loss? And as always, number 10, what links them all together? Mm -hmm. So what links them all together for number 10? Okay, let's finish off then with general knowledge. Uh, round five. Here we go. Number one. 
Uh, what is the Chinese term which claims Chinese term Chinese words Chinese term uh, which claims to use energy forces to harmonize individuals with their surrounding environment? Hmm. So what is the Chinese term which claims to use energy forces to harmonize individuals with their surrounding environment? Number two, what does this laundry symbol represent? So what does this laundry symbol represent for number two? Number three, although popular in other countries, which soft drink giant was behind the failed UK launch of the Dasani water brand in the early 2000s. So although popular in other countries, which soft drink giant was behind the failed UK launch of the Dasani water brand in the early 2000s? Number four, how many years after a car is first registered in the UK is its first MOT required? So how many years after a car is first registered in the UK is the first MOT required? Number five, Brunel University is near which UK, uh, which UK town? Let me just add that in for those who are on mute. Hold, please. Do, 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 do. Uh. Uh, 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 round five, round five, round five, round five, round five, which UK town? City, there we go, that made more sense. Um, so let's try that again. Brunel University is near which UK town or city? Is it Bristol, Portsmouth or Uxbridge? So Brunel University is near which UK town? Is it uh, UK town or city? Is it Bristol, Portsmouth or Uxbridge? I suddenly thought then if I put town, Bristol and Portsmouth are cities and it, yeah, so. <laughs> Number six, which month is St. David's Day? So which month is St. David's Day? Number seven, the Dachshund dog. Start again. The Dachshund dog breed is more commonly referred by which nickname? So the Dachshund dog breed is more commonly referred to by which nickname? Number eight, uh, yeah, number eight. Ofsted is a governing body for which stand uh, for standards in which area? So Ofsted is a governing body for standards in which area?
Two to go, number nine. Bundestag is which country's federal parliament? So Bundestag is which country's federal parliament? And finally, number 10. The Rod Laver Cup is currently taking place in London and involves which sport? So the Rod Laver Cup is currently taking place in London and involves which sport? So there you go. That is all of your questions for this evening. So we go into another short break. Let me just sort all this out. Um, so yeah, it's same as again, if you head on over to Twitter, um, our Twitter address is up there at the virtual pub Q1. Uh, you'll have the links there if you need to run back through any of those questions. So let me push that one there. Uh, that no, that one there, that one there. That's it. Perfect. Uh, right. I'll take a short break and I'll see you back after here. Uh, so yeah, nine dingbats as always say what you see and I'll be back here with some answers shortly. See you in a minute.
Okay, right. Are we ready for some answers for these then? Let's see how you got on with these. Some of these are quite clever. I like these. Uh, but here we go. Here we go. There we go. Number one. And uh, number one was too big to ignore. So too big to ignore. Number two, a little on the large side. So a little on the large side for number two. And number three, running away from home. Number four, I thought was quite clever. Take from the rich and give to the poor. Number five, makes no difference. Number six, again, I love this, was clever. Blanket. Blank. It. Yeah. Number seven, green with envy. And number eight was free for all. And number nine was paper cut. And I've just realized I've not even been on screen. Never mind. You don't need to see me. <laughs> right. Okay. Get your... <laughs> I didn't push the button to push it across. Never mind. Uh, right. So get all your, get your answer sheets together. Let's find out how you did with the final part of the quiz as well. So 20 answers still to come. Uh, while I do my little bits and pieces, so it's that one there, that's fine, that needs to drop down a little bit there, and then I can do that and push that, and then we're good to go. Right, okay, push that one, here we go. Right, so connections round then. 20, uh, 20 answers, let's uh, let's see how you did with this connection as well. Uh, right, here we go, number one. Uh, what P can be another word for the, the principal or the chief important, or of chief importance, it is primary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You might notice a little pronunciation of how I pronounce these, but there is a reason. Number two, what is the name of the cheese from southern Italy, traditionally made from buffalo's milk? It is mozzarella. If you didn't get the link, can you see where it's going? Uh, number three, complete the quote from A Few Good Men. You can't handle the truth. Number four, what can go after roller and ice and before board? It is skate. I'll stop it now. Uh, number five, someone faced with a difficult choice between two or more alternatives is said to face a dilemma. Number six, what is another name for glycerol? Colorless, odorless, and frequently used in cosmetics. It's glycerin. Number seven, when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, Franklin D. Roosevelt declared it was a day that will live in infamy. Number eight, what is the molten rock expelled from a volcano called? It is lava. Number nine, what word beginning with R can be used to describe a situation full of possible danger, failure or loss? It is risky. What links them all together? Uh, they all end, all of those words end in girls' names. Go back through and have a look. You've got Sky, Ava, Emma. I uh, can't remember some. Oh, primary, some Mary. Uh, yes, yeah, so they all end in girls' names. Train. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. So yeah, girls' names. I like that. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm quite chuffed with that one. If I must be honest. How did you get on there? Uh, Jebra knowledge. Then number one. What is the Chinese term which claims to use energy forces to harmonize individuals with their surrounding environment? It is feng shui. If you looked at my office where I'm sat right now, you'd think, uh, yeah, feng shui. Mine's just weird, apparently. Number oh hello. I didn't change the picture. Yeah. Oops. Uh, I'll just del I'll just delete that picture. What did that symbol, the laundry symbol, represent? It is no dry cleaning. Number three, although popular in other countries, which soft drink giant was behind the failed UK launch of the Dasani water brand in the early two thousands? It was Coca Cola. Yeah, wasn't there some controversy around it that it came basically uh, from a tap in a factory in Slough or something and they were saying it was like purified, incredible water. I can't remember, I vaguely remember it. And number four, how many years after a car is first registered in the UK is its first MOT required? It is three years. Number five, Brunel University is near Uxbridge. Through the curveballs of Bristol and Portsmouth because they're... Um, associated with uh, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Uh, but yeah, Uxbridge is where Brunel University is. Number six, which month is St. David's Day? It is March. First of March. 
Number seven, the Dachshund dog breed is more commonly referred by which nickname it is a sausage dog. Number eight, Ofsted is a governing body for standards in which area it is education. Number nine, Bundestag is which country's federal parliament? It is Germany. And I've broken it. Come back. Come back. And finally, number 10. The Rod Laver Cup is currently taking place in London and involves which sport? It is tennis. Okay, so tot your scores up, um, and I've got a tiebreaker coming for you in just a second. Why have I come off that screen, actually? I didn't need to. Um, hang on, let me bring it back up. Uh, that one there, uh, that one there, I think, that one there, that's it. So your tiebreaker then is this. Uh, EA Sports and FIFA are to end their long-running partnership next year after how many years together? Mm, this actually quite surprised me with the answer. I was quite shocked to be honest uh but ea sports and fifa are to end their long-running partnership next year after how many years together remember nearest to it gets the point if you end up with the same answer then declare each other the winners <laughs> okay uh answer then very quickly is in three 30 30 i mean i know i'm 40 years old and knocking on a bit um but fifa and ea sports have been doing football games since i was 10 years old i mean that was, yeah crazy absolutely crazy so there we go that is it that is all of your questions and your tiebreaker etc for this evening uh how did you get on uh providing i've done it right uh there should be a post coming up on social media any minute uh for you to put your scores on and let us know how you did um and that is it for me uh just to signpost this week and what we've got coming up sorry not this week next week what we've got coming up uh so thursday quiz as i say live from connections really really looking forward to it um and again if you can support us with the marathon chris and myself the link is down below um saturday's quiz will be pre-recorded like i say because i'm in i'm pre-recording that on tuesday oh no I'm not pre-recording it on wednesday um so yeah so that uh will be pre-recorded um and then i'm going to try i mentioned this on thursday very briefly i'm going to try this thing where i do like a, a drop-in center like a coffee morning if you like uh on monday where i'm going to be sat here in this position right in a way i'll be probably sat here as i normally am with a hoodie and uh what have you but yeah so i'm going to be sat here about 10 o'clock on monday morning live on youtube probably about half an hour i would have thought don't think it'd be any longer than that unless we're all getting into it um but just i'm going to be sat writing the quiz and i thought you know save me from procrastinating thought i'd just give it a bit of a try i've seen you know twitch streamers who do it when they get bored of playing their games and they decide to just sit there and and hang out with people and have a chat so um but yeah you might be able to contribute to the quiz you know i might ask for a category or you know give me someone to research or what have you and i might go and see if i can find some weird and wonderful facts about it and then you never know your question might appear on thursday's quiz uh so yeah so if you're about drop in come and have a look um come and have a chat uh grab yourselves a coffee and get yourself settled in for you know just having a bit of a laugh and a bit of a giggle on a on a random monday let's just give it a trial try something new and if it doesn't work it doesn't work um but yeah on that note as well i'm taking over social media bet doesn't know this yet uh but i'm taking over our facebook and instagram stories uh with a bit of a behind the scenes because there's a lot going on next week and uh, so i thought i'd take you guys on the journey because you guys have been a part of this journey for the last two and a half years so i'm going to show you a bit of behind the scenes stuff uh what happens in a week in the life of me although it's a bit of a different week thanks as always that is it from me uh let us know how you got on tonight and i'll see you soon as always if i find the right one uh that one there uh oh, i've not updated the credits have i i'll do it for thursday as always for me, take care. See you soon. Stay safe.